So some of you have asked about why we can see different constellations at different times during the year. And we're going to use this tool, which is called a trippancy, to help explain why that is. Now you'll notice the trippancy isn't perfectly to scale. Uh, the Earth, compared to the Sun, the Earth's too big. If it was to scale, the Earth would be about that big, and it wouldn't be that close. But a lot further out, about 40 feet or so. And what this tool does is it shows the mechanics of the Earth as it orbits the Sun. It also, on the base, shows seasons and months of the year. So right now we're in about August in summer. And, here, and this is of course for the, for the northern hemisphere. And here we're in November and autumn. February slash January in winter, May in spring, then back to August in the summer. It also isn't perfect in the day of the Earth, because there should be 365 days in one year, so one time going around this. And there's about 16 days going around this. But for our purposes, um, this should work pretty well. So the first thing that you need to know uh, to help explain this is something called conservation of angular momentum. And that just means that when something's spinning in a certain way, it tends to remain spinning in that same way. That's why our day, uh, the length of the day, doesn't change. Well, also, it stays spinning on whatever its axis of rotation is. Its axis of rotation is just the line that it's rotating around. Okay, and that axis of rotation is always going to point the same direction uh, based on an outside reference point. And so the axis of Earth is represented right here at the North Pole and down here. So you can imagine going through the Earth at this angle. And so this is pointed this way, and as it turns in front, it's still pointing that same direction. And then as it comes over here, it's still pointing that same direction. Now, in the case of Earth, on the northern side, our axis of rotation points to Polaris, which is given the nickname North Star, which means if we're to extend out this line, it'll point to Polaris. Um, and that's always how it is, uh, no matter the time of year. So if you look north from the northern hemisphere, Polaris will always be in the same spot uh, because the Earth's axis of rotation is pointing to it, and so it doesn't appear to move. Now, the next thing that you want to notice is, here we are in summer, and it's not, it's not real perfect again, but you'll notice the axis of rotation for the northern hemisphere is closer to the sun. It's tilted a little towards the sun, whereas if we rotate around to winter, because we're on the opposite side and the axis of rotation is pointing the same direction, now, in winter, it's pointing away from the sun, which means that, on the northern hemisphere, which means that you're going to have a longer night than a day, whereas if we come back around, you'll have a longer day than night. And we're going to represent this to show the daytime and nighttime of the Earth. So, right now, all that's in the Earth, right here, would be in daytime. And in the summer, when it's pointed towards it, I'll try to get the northern, or North America right here. So, North America has, is down here. And as we move it to winter, we have North America in view. It's 
higher on the Earth instead of down here, normally, on the summer. And so that means that, again, night is longer than day in the winter. That's why, because you're pointing away from it on the northern hemisphere. If you went to the southern hemisphere, it would be summer uh, when it's winter here. And so there's something that we call the Arctic Circle. And it's right about here. It's really close uh, to the North Pole. And what the Arctic Circle represents is the point where you can have six months of day and six months of night. And that's because, again, it's tilted towards the sun, so the daytime side is right here. And really close to the axis of rotation, you'll notice you're always in the daytime side. So it's always daytime. But if we rotate it around to summer, maybe you can see that a little better over here. So imagine we're still in summer. All this area would be the Arctic Circle would be up here, and it would be the complete circle around the pole that would be right here. But then when you go to winter, uh, it'll always be in the nighttime side. And this happens uh, in the southern hemisphere as well. Because there, is a, there is a circle close enough to the south pole that also has a six-month day and a six-month night. Now, the other thing about this is that if we're here on the summer side, here we have North America facing away from the sun. And if it's facing away from the sun, it's nighttime. If it's facing towards the sun, the sun's light is just too bright, and you can't see any stars that are out at the same time as the sun. You have to wait for the sun to set, uh, for the Earth to rotate away from it, in order to see stars, other stars. So right now I have it at nighttime. We're facing stars that are this direction. And so, at this time, we're going to see stars like Sagittarius and Scorpius. However, if we rotate it around the winter side, now, again, here's North America, we're facing this direction. So we're going to see constellations like Orion and Canis Major. So, this disk represents where our line of sight is for the sky from North America. And to make it more accurate, we would have actually a circle around North America and then the plain outward. But this is just fine because if you were to extend this disk all the way out to the stars, the angle from here to here would be so small that once you were at the stars, if you just went a small bit above, a few degrees above, you would be able to see. Them. So it works just fine for what we're trying to do. And so, right now in the summer, we see all the stars, we'd have to turn to the nighttime side, but we would see all the stars that are out from this plane this way. And as we went through the year, that plane would remain and we'd see different stars and different constellations, which is why it changes because you can imagine a sphere around us and the stars as like pinpoint light around that sphere and we're just looking at different parts of the sphere. So now, closer to the winter, if we were on the nighttime side, we would see different stars than on the summer because we were looking this way and now we're looking this way. And if something was under that disk, we wouldn't be able to see it. As we went around the sun, if something was always under that disk, like the Magellanic Clouds, which are dwarf galaxies of the Milky Way, we wouldn't be able to see them unless we went to a different
different portion of the sky. So let's say we were down in Mexico, which is still part of North America, but even a smaller radius, you would see the Magellanic Clouds because they're just on that uh, latitude mark. But that's still only going to be for a very specific part of the year. Now, some of you may have heard that you can uh, use the sky to find your uh, latitude. And well, that's because, remember I mentioned that the Earth's axis of rotation is directly in line with Polaris on the north side? So you'll notice that if you're standing right at the North Pole, then the Earth's axis of rotation is going to be uh, coming straight out of the ground. So if you're looking up, you're looking along the axis of rotation, because remember, we just define up as being away from the center of the Earth. So if it's right here, up is this direction. And so Polaris would be right at 90 degrees, and that's your latitude. Whereas if you sink lower in the northern hemisphere towards the equator, you'll notice that with the horizon, Polaris is still angled with the axis of rotation, but now that's not directly up if you sink lower in the sky. And so the farther you go, if you're down towards the equator, it's going to be like this, is looking towards Polaris. So it's going to be really far from uh, directly overhead. And so if you were on the equator, Polaris, if you imagine yourself on the equator, Polaris would be at 90 degrees, so, or the North Pole would be at 90 degrees from the equator, so Polaris would be right on the horizon all throughout the year. So depending on the angle between the horizon and Polaris, that gives you your angle north latitude.